Super. Uh, so, hello everyone, and thank you for sticking around. It's mad to see how many people are interested in this kind of thing and all the, the cool work that's been going on. Uh, yeah, really exciting stuff. Uh, so, I'm going to talk about concepts, work that we've been doing at Welcome Collection, and how that links to Wikidata. Uh, I'm Harrison. This is Welcome Collection. Uh, this is what it normally looks like. This is what it looks like at the moment for pandemic reasons. Uh, this is also what it looks like at the moment. We have a website. Um, if you click on the collections uh, page, you can explore our collections. You can search for things. Uh, if you search for stuff like witches, you can find books about witches, which is really nice. Um, all of our uh, the, the photography and uh, catalog material is all as openly licensed and uh, as clearly licensed as possible, um, as is all of the code that makes all of this stuff happen. Uh, so everything that I'm going to talk about is out there if you want to go and find it. Um, we're on GitHub at Welcome Collection. Uh, and what I'm going to talk about is uh, this. We're trying to enrich our works, um, these things, with other people's insights. Uh, we're trying to add data that we don't have to the data that we do have. Um, so on works like that book about witches, you can see that we have subjects tagged there, um, like the history of witchcraft and Northamptonshire, which is in England. Um, yeah, they're, they're the things that we know about this work. Um, some works have these subjects or concepts annotated on them. Some of them don't. Some of them are just these giant blocks of rich but unstructured text. Um, one of the things that we've been doing um, over the last few months, a year maybe, um, is working on a model to uh, add subjects to this, to recognize entities in the text. Uh, and this works quite well. It can find people and places and uh, concepts, subjects, um, organizations, things that look like um, what would be links in Wikipedia, um, because that's the data that this model has been trained on. It's been trained on Wikipedia, so it tries to uh, kind of replicate that, that feel of the data. Um, but the nice thing about this particular model is that it doesn't just recognize entities, it also makes a guess based on its kind of mathematical model of the language around those concepts. It will make a guess about which area of wiki data space that entity might exist in. So this first entity that's been labeled, Crick, um, based on the surrounding context, in these paragraphs, it will guess that that is Francis Crick rather than a Crick of the neck or, or some other kind of Crick, uh, which is really useful. Um, and if we do this thousands and thousands of times over a whole catalog, we can end up with uh, the same kind of infinitely explorable and connected knowledge graphy uh, collection as Wikidata has, which is, yeah, as we all know, amazing for exploration and discovery of ideas. Um, another thing that we've been doing, uh, once we have those concepts, either added by humans by hand in those uh, structured um, fields or in the small, uh, loose, inferred way, uh, we can enrich those concepts um, with data from elsewhere. So we can go and fetch data from places like Wikidata and the Library of Congress and Mesh, um, grab the data about those concepts which match and bring them back in to our own collection. So we have these enriched concepts, which is really nice, really useful. Um, yeah, we're working on the process for that. You can see this is still a, a fairly sketchy diagram. Um, and yeah, ultimately we're trying to build a knowledge graph for working collection, uh, which seems very related to this big AHRC connected knowledge project. Um, all of this relies on these external hierarchical classification systems um, like LCSH and MeSH. Um, and I think if you are from an institution and you're interested in doing this kind of work, you need to know that you're going to be working with both uh, non-hierarchical and hierarchical classification systems and the kind of weirdnesses that go along with that. Um, we've started with LCSH and MeSH because they make sense for our collection because we are a, a medical museum and library um, but uh, there are lots of others out there and 
yeah, we might later incorporate those. Those might later be uh, uh, more appropriate for your institution if you're going to start this kind of thing. Um, we were asked uh, as part of the prompt for this um, this presentation to talk about what we wish we'd known before we'd started these projects. Um, uh, the thing that I wish I'd known is about fish. I read a book about fish um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's called uh, Why Fish Don't Exist. It's by Lulu Miller. It's really, really good. And the idea in the book is quite an old one. And I'm amazed that I hadn't already come across it in all of my years of pursuing an education and a career in science. Uh, the idea basically is that fish don't exist, they don't make sense as a classification of thing. Um, when you look closer at what fish are, there's much more variation within the group that we call fish than there is without. And there are lots of categories outside of the group we call fish that would naturally absorb part of the group that we call fish. Um, if you're looking in more detail than just classifying by thing what go in water. Um, so yeah, the thrust of the book or what I took away from it um, is that we tend to come up with these hierarchies of information um, and usually those hierarchies are quite neat and place ourselves at the top because that's how we go and discover things. We look outward and we catalogue based on our own perspectives uh, in relation to ourselves. But there's lots and lots and lots of stuff out there that is uncatalogued at the moment um, that doesn't fit neatly in those hierarchies. Um, and it's only through a thousand random quirks of history that we have got the, the shape of the catalogues that we have. And if we were to change the people at the top of those hierarchies, change the people who were uh, kind of allowed to go and discover and record and establish those hierarchies, we'd have a totally different view of the world with different things in these hierarchies. Um, but really, the problem that I have with this and the problem that I've had with it um, in doing this work and working this project um, is deeper than just the individuals who have been uh, cataloging this stuff. It's, it's with the hierarchical structure itself. Um, I think nature is much more like a, a random scatter of stuff. Um, that's what we've been learning over the last few hundred years uh, in science. Um, and it changes all the time. Uh, it resists clean definitions. And confining yourself to a hierarchical view of the stuff around you is kind of limiting um, because of that. Uh, you can't represent the, the kind of chaos of the natural world in a hierarchy. Um, and yet we as museums continue to use hierarchies. We continue to catalogue fish uh, and by allowing people to filter and search for fish with these subject classifications, we kind of bias people into a continuing belief in the thing that we call fish, even though it doesn't make sense. And we continue to do the same things around race uh, and gender and all sorts of other classifications that don't really make sense when you look a bit closer and have all sorts of horribleness tied to them. Um, and we shouldn't feel confined to these uh, classification systems, I think. Um, we're not confined to static paper records, which these systems were built for. Uh, computers are really, really good at representing complexity. And I think we, as the people, you know, you in the audience uh, as well, um, the people building systems to represent learning and knowledge and understanding should be trying to reflect that complexity in our work um, and not entrenching the old outdated perspectives. Uh, I think graph representations are a good place to start with this kind of thing. Um, so focusing on the connections and descriptions of things without restricting the ability to add new things or modify the existing ones as time goes on. Um, I think if you can represent soft links between things, so say A is a bit like B, but not really, that's even better. Um, it's worth emphasizing that Wikidata isn't hierarchical um, by nature. It, it can represent hierarchies, but um, it's, it's an underlying graph model, uh, which is uh, a much nicer and uh, a kind of more natural fit for the natural world, I think. Um, I'm not saying that you can fix racism by switching to a graph model, but I am saying that we should resist entrenching these, these old hierarchies. And I think there's a real opportunity with this, this big new project to uh, change the way that institutions reflect this kind of knowledge. 
Um, I hate the idea that we should resist new understanding in the hope of like better representing the old one, or that the, the old understandings might not be better represented by a better system of representation. Um, if any of this makes sense, there's another book to mention called The Power to Name by Hope Olson, which is also kind of old now, uh, but really, really changed the way that I think about this kind of stuff. Uh, that's it from me. Great, thank you very much, Harrison. Every collection needs books about witches, I think, is one of the things we can take away from today. Um, the uh, question that's come in for you is, do you think the work you are doing to enrich existing descriptions retrospectively will impact on changes to the way that we catalogue new collections in future? Ooh, uh, I hope so. Um, <laughs> Uh, where's that question going? Is that oh, it's, it's not in the chat, it's in the Q&A, which you can't see. Um, but I guess, is it already informing the way The Welcome thinks about cataloguing its collections? Um, I think there's a, a back and forth. I think the way that Welcome thinks about cataloguing has informed the way that I think about it. Um, and so I'm hoping to, to influence some of that with the, the kind of technical background that I have. Um, yes, I... I hope that this is an evolution of the, the kind of cataloging systems that we are currently using. I hope that it is an evolution for the better. Great, thank you very much. Uh, and there's a, a comment come through that awareness of these issues sensitizes catalogers to watch out and be aware of these issues and be open to future ones. So I think the work that you've been talking about is going to help all of us think about that too. Um, so thank you very much. And I will hand back to John uh, for some final remarks on what's been a wonderful um, session. Thank you. Great, so I've just put up the last Mentimeter uh, question for the afternoon, which is around what do you think are the biggest hurdles um, to you adopting Wikidata IDs um, in your work? Um, so I'll leave that running when you ever think about that and post your answers. Um, and so it only really remains for me to thank our eight amazing speakers. Uh, Shani, Jason, Emma, Martin, Jane, James, uh, Navino, and Harrison, uh, who've all kept fantastically to time. Uh, and then a final thank you to Rhiannon and Lewis, who uh, amazingly uh, scheduled a seminar in a seminar room in our in our museum, and then turned it into a webinar. <laughs> Uh, in a couple of weeks uh, and has worked incredibly hard behind the scenes and also to our colleagues um, Paul, Chris and Tony in our IT department who have supported setting this up and it's worked uh, seamlessly well. So our project continues um, for about another sort of uh, 14 or 15 months. This is the first event as Jane said we're sort of at the beginning of our journey then the next event probably be uh, in December and we'll take some of the things that you're putting into Mentimeter this afternoon to start to shape the kind of concerns of um, that event. So keep an eye out wherever you heard about this event, keep an eye out there again because we'll uh, be posting on the Museum Computer Group mailing list and on Twitter um, through our networks. Um, so hopefully you can join that one, might be in the museum, might be online again, who knows these days. Um, so yeah, Thank you very much. We're finishing pretty much bang on time. So it's been brilliant to have so many people and have an excellent weekend. And I'll leave this going for now. Thanks very much. And a big thank you to John and the rest of the staff of The Connector, all the people involved in just making this happen. Thank you, everyone. It's been our pleasure.